It's early December 2021 and you are listening to The Future of Photography. The Future of Photography. Look at that, we're complete. I'm Chris, there's Adrian, Imar and Jeremiah. Hello. Merry Hello. future Christmas. And <laughs> Indeed, yes. <laughs> Happy it's holiday. not that far away. The selfish not broadcast. Far away. <laughs> the, well, let's see. Not let's, all of us. Not all of us. No, we're, not giving, all of us. we're giving. We're giving people. I'm, I'm yeah, giving. I'm not humans. asking. So anyway, this is early December, <laughs> but we thought um, we bring some of our favorite things, maybe some of the things we want to give away or some tips or some people put in things they want for Christmas. Um, <laughs> Christmas yeah. is a time for getting, not giving. <laughs> it's our letter to Santa. Right. Ah, okay. <laughs> so so we thought we'd put this uh, in early December. So if uh, anything... There's a chance for people to order with yes. supply chain. Issues. We do not have a shop or anything, so... <laughs> Um, but yeah, this um, we put all those links, Shop of local. course. Sorry, Imar? Shop local. Shop local, yep. Some, I, I, it's pretty hard where I am. Important. I guess the ones... I see, wa I see water and trees, basically. Yeah, you are you are uh, Vancouver Island right now. Oh, uh, yeah, am I allowed to say that? Oops. Yes, yeah, sure. Yeah. That's fine. You're working. <laughs> so um, we are, yeah, we have a big list of things to look at and uh um and uh i'll i'll kick this off with a couple of things that i think would be nice for christmas do you remember the solar can i do yeah, i think i've still got a couple of course, of course. Yeah, yeah, the, 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 yeah. the 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 soda can with a with a hole poked mm -hmm. in and the big bit of film well yeah. the, the guy who makes them now makes the solar puck which is ah. the same thing, but in small. So that is a little, um, yeah, a little pocket size. Pocket size. Yeah, it's 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 like a hockey puck size, maybe, or, or looks like one. Uh -huh. uh, has a hole in it, has a, a piece of paper in it, and you just attach it uh, to to your handlebars. <laughs> to your handlebars. I think that's a pole somewhere. It won't be very helpful if it's moving around. So again, oh, it doesn't that want one to move too far, does it? No. Right, it's, like that, it's made out of like a shoe polish can or something. That's what like it looks that. like. Yeah. yeah, or it's just a squashed can. And it so. uh, ends up um, uh, sitting there for uh, five, six months, and you get uh, the sun to expose your photo, and you see all the little paths Sad. that the sun takes, and so on. So that's yeah, I, uh, I love I love these mm. things. Mm. These, are, these are good. Oops. See. And <laughs> uh, can I ask everybody a question? Um, mm -hmm. When you get a new piece of kit, as you guys would say, over the pond, um, does that not inspire you to go out and push the limits of it and just explore, re-energize, as it were? Of course. Yeah, mm. it, it, it does. Don't it get does. too much too often because then it just gets overload. So yeah, it's well, spaced, spaced it, out through time, definitely. It's Come on, in, one a week. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's really interesting because um, with with my German uh, photo podcast, Happy Shooting, we have a sponsor who sends us a, a new gadget every week to evaluate, to look at, to talk about on the show. You better learn German. <laughs> well, <laughs> the, the interesting thing is that it really it really turns it it it. it it cured me from the gear acquisition syndrome, right? It it really cured me, because, yeah, I'm you can. I'm not sure I believe you, but it's a nice, <laughs> it's a nice sentiment. <laughs> I have bought a, a a new piece of gear, but I will not show this um, this week, and it's not even anything expensive. Anyway, um, mm -hmm. second thing on my list uh, is a listener of said podcast has uh, sent me photos of a Lego set that he and his daughter built, which is a camera. Ooh. And no, uh, working. has a, no, it's not working. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and a little film capsule. And uh, I looked it up and it is an actual Lego set, wow. but you can't buy it. It is, um, there's a, a brickset.com, which lists like all the gazillions of Lego sets. And, this is a gift with a purchase. So if you purchase something, it's a promotional kind of thing. Um, uh, okay. uh, 179 pieces. And uh, I asked him what if it also takes photos 
like how big the photos would be and he's he showed me the sen the in quotes sensor uh, and says it would probably be two by four pixels in lego terms so two, two plastic bricks yeah <laughs> yeah so um that's quite that's cute yeah. isn't that cute isn't that fun so it's fun yeah so if you want to build a camera the, the, that doesn't work go for it the lego the lego secret set number is six three nine two three four four if you want to find it. I think it's on eBay. I think you can find it on eBay. Ah, Interesting stuff. Interesting stuff. Adrian, you have listed a few things that you would I have. I just love went to get your hands yeah, on. I just, I just uh, what did I want? I, I just went through and made a list of some of the things that in my head that I thought might be fun to play with over the holidays. There is a, there is a theme for, I guess, a little bit of a theme for, for being able to share the photos. Um uh, or share the the photography love let's say um and so uh the first one the first one is is all about me um it's an upgrade <laughs> right to, so uh many of our listeners and viewers will have heard me talk about my love for the olympus tg4 which i, I carry around practically everywhere with me uh, of course that's two generations old now probably two and a half generations because although there isn't a tg7 the Blooming well should be. So, um, <laughs> you've always you've always been a fan of the tough cameras. Uh, the I, I yeah. What, uh, some of the some of the most. Uh, are you just too careless with to them? Use. Do you just throw them around too much, or? <laughs> You know, it's not that no um although yes um there is something very freeing about being able to just get your camera and mm -hmm. throw it into the sea right because it comes with mm -hmm. a wrist strap that is also a flotation device so you know you you can I, and i've done this thrown off a, <laughs> off a sailing boat you know actually thrown it into the sea but it doesn't help um, float you <laughs> if you go overboard mm -hmm. with your camera <laughs> no, 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 it, it wouldn't. Yeah. But, um, that would be a Swiss Army TG4. Yeah, no, but, you know, the but great it's, thing is so when, they, when they recover the camera, they'll get your last photos. <laughs> yeah. you quite, quite possibly, the yes, <laughs> quite possibly. But uh, I mean, I have, yeah, with mine, I have captured some photos that I couldn't possibly get any other way, you know, like from, you know, bobbing in the sea and taking video of my kids jumping off a boat and what have you so mm -hmm. yeah that that's something that you can do that's different from some other cameras um i like the fact that it's got a zoom lens but it's all completely compact so it doesn't even when you switch it on it doesn't it doesn't stick out um and of course you don't have to worry about if it gets bashed around a bit but uh, i've i've long um thought about getting the upgraded version uh, and I've been waiting for them to do the next upgrade, uh, but of course, Olympus are under new ownership, so it may or may not come. But so that's that's on my wish list for Christmas. If somebody that's was right. kind enough that's to buy me a new camera, <laughs> so anyone got one of those that they want to get rid of, you know where to drop it. <laughs> um, <laughs> sec second one on your list is uh, is analog. Se well, sort of second. Uh well, it's a sort of mixture of the two, isn't it? So the second one on the list is about is about sharing the joy of photography over the holiday period. As I've often said, there's never more joy in photography than when you give somebody an instant photograph. So my next on my list is the new Instax Wide printer, um, which then you could allow everybody to print their own photographs from it, or you could print photos that you take and give them to them. So that's something I'd like to get. I have the mini printer, um, still on the first generation mini printer, actually, uh, but I uh, don't think they've changed much. This looks really good, really useful. Mm. Yeah, and um, just what fun. format? What format is the Instax relative to, say, an iPhone? It, like uh, a ten by eight? Oh, okay. It's uh, I think it's more. Well, it like says eighty-six a millimeters by, by ten point mm, eight millimeters. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. Millimeters. <laughs> whatever, oh, that is, whatever that is, ten by eight. Whatever that is in oh, no, freedom that's units. <laughs> That's but that's the um, that's the size of the film itself. Nice. So the size of the image is smaller. Yeah. Um, four by three, and I think it's there. about a three by two. I don't know, but the I mean, you can get uh, it's you can get. I think there's three different aspect ratios because I think the three different sizes of film are different aspect ratios, and of course the middle one is a square size. But but yeah, uh, it's all. Um, uh, that that would be something I'd like uh, to be able to share some slightly bigger photos with people. Very fun. I like that. I think mm. I'll put it on my Christmas list. 
There you go. <laughs> I have done actually with the little one, been out on a photo walk with friends, and then as you stop at the pub for a drink or whatever, just print out a couple of photos, share them around to people, and just say, There you go, you know, for you, is it? Yeah, a gift from me to you. And that's quite good fun as well. So are I've you played with my, I have, I have a small one too, which really works if you just want to do a mosaic. In other words, take multiples, ah. print them mm. out, make them big, <clears throat> frame them. They're, they're, it actually works great and the quality looks good. So you can actually create something oh, neo-abstract, but good. So. I hadn't thought about that. That's a nice idea. So are you, uh, Adrian, are you good with um, keeping <laughs> all those gadgets charged when you carry them with you and so on? Because that, that is one of my biggest downfalls for having gadgets. To, well, first of all, I have to pack them and, and I have to have them charged. And um, I end up often failing on some aspect of this. I think. So you're going to end up with the Tesla phone, are you? <laughs> Looking at, with a, you we have the... to get to superchargers and charge it there. <laughs> oh, solar. They've got built-in solar panels they're going to have and everything. Oh, really? Oh, wow. No. Yeah, I was watching some stuff the other day comparing okay. it with the iPhones. And, I, I, yeah, yeah he's going to have his own... Right? He's going to have his own internet built in and everything. I I can hardly wait to that. I mean, when when I travel, I think my the the cables and chargers and inputs and all all things. And by the way, nowadays, even with the switch at Apple, you need you know the Thunderbird, you need the USB C, Mm. all all of those things. So your your actual infrastructure charger stuff Mm -hmm. is almost equal in bulk Mm. to the gadgets, which are getting smaller. So mm-hmm. it is a significant pain in the ass and does require, no, I'm not going to take this because it's just added bulk. Trust me, when mm-hmm. I've traveled here to uh, British Columbia with, and what I actually am using, uh, you know, <laughs> half of it I just won't <laughs> use because it's too much <laughs> gear management, which is another mm-hmm. There is a bit of that. There is a, I think that the, uh, I, I don't do too badly. I think most of the things on my list are chargeable by USB of one kind or another these days. Uh, I think these new Instax printers, these these new, they call them the link printers. It's like a new product line. I think they charge by USB, whereas my old Instax printer actually has a hard to buy specific battery yeah. size. I can't even remember what it's called. painful. So you have one of that. It may- <laughs> Go ahead. That may be a good uh, episode in the future is gear management. Gear ma- yes. Could be, yeah. <laughs> mm. gear um, management. You have one of your on your list that we don't have a link for, Adrian. I do, yeah. So this is my sh- this is my request to the community, actually. So I, I would love to have uh, a an, uh, an iPad or iPhone app that is really good at just doing very simple layouts for zines so that you could say, and then send in them off so that you could say, okay, well, I've been on a, uh, a weekend away or I've been on a photo walk with my buddies or I've been to a party or whatever it might be. Yeah? And you could just say like, throw all those in and, uh, and, and click the go button and the next week, you know, one or 10 or, or, 20 you know these things arrive at your house i don't know of one so that's why there's no links if anybody knows of a good one that would be fantastic to hear about a zine maker mm-hmm. for a your zine iPhone. maker app yeah hmm. that, okay. that would be great um, have you have you tried kind of feel zine that maker I've, at, I've in the app this. store have you tried zine uh, maker in the that's, that's what i would call it if i made one i i haven't actually so that's possibly a very good th- point chris Sorry, i haven't <laughs> tried that. or a zine, zine smith or something along those lines yes <laughs> good point possibly good point. okay you you brought one that doesn't take any batteries um which is this one uh yeah just just for fun i mean yeah, yeah, this is this is an example that, rather than anything but i yeah this is a t-shirt that says what the f on it and above that it's got f- it's got you know four different graphics of different apertures at 1.8 2.8 5.6 and 8 i don't know what happened to four i don't know why f4 isn't in there anywhere and i don't know why 1.8 is in there either because it's, it's out of favor it's, is it, it? It's obviously for somebody who's gone for a really cheap lens because it only opens to one point eight and it doesn't have an f four on it. <laughs> so other than that, it's a Poor great t-shirt. people. How can you live without an f four? <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's the most useful one, isn't it? F four, <laughs> just enough depth of field to capture the people you take photos of, with, uh, with, uh, and a bit of separation from the background. <laughs> if you have the right focal length. Mm-hmm. Okay. Possibly yes. And one more. 
on your list one more that doesn't have a link either it's another one that doesn't have a link on it yeah um which is just more social time with other photographers and hanging out you know in in the real world i don't know if this is like castles in the sky at this point but uh yeah, hey just we are here we are people. photographers <laughs> this is social that's time. true that's true and each of you is i'm sure in your own little real world but you're not in my real world are you you're just faces on no, a screen we're just avatars right? <laughs> just voices in your head we're not real <laughs> uh, uh, hint there is no real world where very i very true am. very true that's the, that's that's the right attitude there everything's fake so, anyway that's 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 one of my wishes um i mean uh, as uh, on the day of recording because the rules are changing quite a lot at the moment in the uk on the day of recording i am actually allowed to go out and meet people and have photo walks i do have one lined up for christmas the saturday before christmas to meet some friends in london oh that's um, nice. no doubt there will be lots that's of chat good. and some photo taking and probably some drinking and, this is the uh, thing <laughs> with photo walks the, the most of the photo walks that i've done or been on ended up not really about photography, but about chatting. Drinking. Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're not for. It's, it's very yeah because you go there to socialise. So you're not you're not really right. ever going to get in the zone, are you? Uh, with, you know, for for on a photo walk, um, but you do get a chance to meet up with your friends and hang out, and I enjoy that sort of thing. So yes, I've never done one. Oh, oh really good time! Fun, really good fun. We have to come I visit come. one day. We yeah, do, really. And then you take us your neighborhood but, that we have that we've seen so many COVID photos test. of. <laughs> you got to get a COVID test. Very true. 24 hours before. Good All work. right. Thank you, Adrian. Next on the list is Imar. Yeah, so I was I didn't think about myself uh, in this instance at all. Actually, I was thinking about um, <laughs> the kind of smaller people in our lives. The and children. How the children. The children. The children. Um, well, there's a lot of people out there that have them and... Um, Sure. I mean, they have had it rough over the last two years, like everybody else. Oh, yes. And like we're constantly trying to get them away from the screens and things. So what better way um, than to introduce them to taking photos? And I, when I think back, the first camera that ever came into um, my house for a child was the VTEC one, which is on mm. the pictures there. Like, I don't know if anybody else ever had I one of those had in one the of house. Those, but yes. It was a great little camera, like and that was a long time ago. He's eighteen, just about to turn eighteen now. So I, I, I'm sure there. Actually, when I was looked into what's available now, there's just oceans of them. There's like a, just every shape, size, color, theme that you could imagine is out there now. They have these tiny little, which is a bit <clears throat> un, unsettling, um, vlogging kind of. There's a VTech vlog video camera where they can <laughs> um you know make their own videos and i'm sure there's some sharing element involved that um would need to be heavily policed uh but uh yeah there's tons of stuff out there for kids and like even just in terms of spending time with each other and you know sharing something that you love with them and just that opportunity to kind of have the chats where you know, sometimes you don't get that chance. Like it's all, it's all good and it's all positive. And like, if anybody out there is searching for ways to kind of reconnect with kids that are finding it tough in particular, then I and, think that's a and maybe you know. maybe introduce them to analog photography because yeah. uh, because they they all know the screens and they all know the gadgets and yeah. the buttons and so on. But yeah. that would be something brilliant new if only, if only you, know, you had yeah. some film around Imar. <laughs> oh, if only i know like we, we've actually been doing this because you know the little um the the kind of instant reusable camera i bought uh -huh. see yeah. i can kind of pass that on and bring my film camera and then we can do that together and it's lovely it's really i'm finding it a really nice way and actually another thing that um i kind of if you've got an old phone, like you're upgrading a phone or something, take the SIM card out and you can give it to a small child to play with and um, with, you know, nothing else on it that they have access to really except the camera. Right. And maybe give them Snapseed. Like I've done, I've showed Snapseed to small kids and they've absolutely loved what they could do with this. Yeah, I it's agree with that. Fun. My my, my granddaughter uh, yeah. will take, take a, first of all, she'll even grab a screenshot 
and then she'll go, let me edit this. <laughs> well, it, and she'll go with... It, 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 it is, a, it is a, it's a means of empowerment and uh, empowering yes. kids really to is. be a creative. To it, it doesn't really matter what kind of toys they play with. Uh, the play is the important part and the, the feeling of being able to change something and to, to impact something oh, yeah. is, is that, a very important one that, for kids. Yeah. Is that not the planting of the artist's seed? It is, it is to create yeah. something mm. today that didn't exist yesterday mm. as, in a way, a growing compulsion, uh, one that I have, and I'm mm. sure shared by all of you guys in different ways. But I think that that um, empowers us to really feel that our lives have some kind of meaning, mm -hmm. whether it's illusory mm -hmm. or not, but it, it's leaving <laughs> traces, breadcrumbs along the way that makes us feel in a way more human and connects to people in ways mm. that are sort of indescribable, indescribable. Very true. Absolutely. So you brought and us there's two tons links of Mar. ideas out there. Yeah. Um, I thought that particularly the, yeah, I thought this one was a particularly good and had some, some particularly 15 nice 15 photography this, lessons for kids. Okay. Yeah, look at that little <laughs> munchkin. Kids with cameras um, are ki ki yeah. small kids with grown up people cameras is a very fun yeah. thing to look at. A huge big DSLR. Can, can, can I ask you guys about that actually? Because I, yeah. I always have a point of view that these things are there to be used. So whether oh, yes. it's yeah, whether it's a, a, a moderately expensive camera or or whether it's my favorite guitar. Or, mm -hmm. or, or whatever, right? Yeah, you know, I've always encouraged my kids to use these things, right? Because yeah. that's what they're for. And, you know, just because my guitar happens to say Les Paul on it doesn't mean that it's not <laughs> suitable for children to yeah. play, right? So, yeah, you know, it's, and it's, mm -hmm. it's, it, for me, that's a really important thing. Um, I, I know uh, not every parent sees it that way. So what, what do you no, guys I think? I would agree. I would totally agree. I'm, I'm, agree? I'm not yeah. precious yeah. with the things I own. I, I hand my cameras off to people uh, while, while I travel. And, and, and yeah. It, I don't, I, uh, yeah, um, of course. I would have to say that um, I have a, a kind of economic barrier <laughs> over which I will not just <laughs> says the like camera. Shooter, yeah. And that bar barrier, well, I, you're free to use everything up to this point. But yeah. beyond Anything, that. Is that what the red dot is actually for then? Is it says, yes, no, do, it's a warning sign. Do not, do not give to kid. <laughs> You've got a luck room. <laughs> I always wondered what that red dot was for. <laughs> it's for that. It's a warning. <laughs> Keep it in your hand. There you go. And and Imar, you also brought us a tool, a self help tool called Google. Yeah, that that What's was that? literally just to go to the top. If yeah. you see the images, if you go to the image, I thought it would open on the image. Page. Oh, okay. I can open the images. So you mm. you have a Google search yeah. with first camera it's for kids. It's just kid. such yeah. a an absolute array of cameras. I thought I would find two or three, but like, look, they're great. <laughs> every aren't they? color shape. Enough. I mean, the VTEC camera that we would have had here is like was, uh, it was very poor quality compared to some of these. And actually, they do mention the reusable. Um, they do suggest the reusable, in, um, you know, disposable cameras. As so, the first one uh, for children. That's, I mean, they're case that I guess they're... Your Instax. Instax, yeah. The Insta so my, my kids love the Instax. Um, <laughs> it's just that's a, it's an really, expensive habit. It's, it's really kids, interesting because <laughs> these kids' cameras are all like my first uh, Sony Fisher Price, whatever, big, bulky, yeah. uh, colorful yeah. plastic things. I remember, they're, distinctly remember my little brother who's 14 years younger than I am. He... Um, mm -hmm. He would never go for these because he wanted the real deal. So real you, you gave him a toy yeah. kind of thing and he would no. toss it away and, and point no, at the this real one. This is what you one. would give a toddler, I think, uh, or a, you know, yeah. four or five-year-old. <laughs> I think well, I had five my own version of that. A ten-year-old, you know. Yes, I had my own know. version of that with my boy when he, he had the VTech one, which is like which is great for little kids with small hands because it's got two big grips on it, one each side, and it's got two viewfinders so they can look with both eyes. They don't have to close an eye, which <laughs> oh, is Right. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and uh, and he they take a bit he, of punishment. He'd happily well. play with that for a little bit, but then he always wanted my cameras. So I think at the time when he was that that sort of age, I think I had the original Fuji X100, and I was like, yeah, this is quite. And 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 you'll I suspect you'll all remember when that when that camera came out, there wasn't really anything quite like it. That was a new market niche, um, mm. and and uh, it wasn't massively expensive, but it wasn't cheap either. Um, and so I was like, okay, here you go, three-year-old boy. Don't don't <laughs> trash my new camera. <laughs> I think I think the, the the economic barrier that Jeremiah brought up can can also be combined with a minimum age barrier. There's and definitely yeah, yeah. Exactly. yeah. There's there's kind of a there's kind of a corridor there that uh, you can there you go yeah you can aware. go. So um, mm. Jeremiah, you are next on the list. Of course, uh, this being our kind of uh, official pre-Christmas episode, I think um, <coughs> we have to ask you a couple of questions about that movie that you made. <laughs> uh, bunch of years ago the christmas vacation movie so um very christmas themed of course um i think i have a question is wh how was shooting that was it really like wh were you in the spirit or was that shot in march or in may or um is it all fake memory. or is it all real that's my question it's mainly fake <laughs> it's mainly fake okay <laughs> there, there is some reality to it we 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 went at the um at the i guess the it would be the end of winter to what we uh, felt was the the place that offered us the most opportunities to get snow where mm -hmm. traditionally there was a lot of snow uh which was in at that time breckenridge colorado a beautiful absolutely gorgeous place not unlike the alps you know just very very and um we also kind of identified you know a a kind of um height, maybe 10,000 feet, where, again, it would be uh, possible. Of course, we arrived there uh, for pre-production, and <laughs> there was no, no snow at all. And, and I had to do, you know, these are all the, the kind of big sledding scenes and all of the stuff in actual snow, the big kind of wide stuff. No snow. And every week ticked by, no snow. And we were getting very nervous. So we thought, okay, for this, why don't we truck in some snow, right? <laughs> Let's get some 40-footer refrigerated trucks and uh, start to bring in some snow, which we did. So we ordered a whole convoy of snow trucks, <laughs> which started to kind of roll towards, you know, Coles to Newcastle kind of thing. <laughs> and um, as they approached, it, it started to snow. <laughs> and then it continued to snow. And it really continued to snow. And if you've ever been into one of those, holy hell, I can't believe how much snow is falling, like one of those three feet overnight, twice. So now we had so much snow, we were, we were like, can we shoot? Can we yes. get <laughs> our equipment through? And so we struggled for that. We were up very high elevation. We had a lot, a lot of snow. And uh, people were, of course, passing out for lack of oxygen. Uh, and that's how we kicked it off. But as the weather warmed, uh, so we did about two weeks there and uh, then went back and the, you know, the summer was upon us. It was about a mm -hmm. 60 or 75 day shoot, something like that. And, and the rest of it was shot on the Warner's back lot. I built the house, built the rooms, built the sets, right. uh, covered the neighborhood with marble dust and snow flakes, uh, soap flakes. And oh, you're shattering all, all my illusions here. <laughs> There you go, and and that's that's the snow Christmas vacation production <laughs> story. So, no, 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 no real Christmas. Wrong time of no, year. No, well, we had to get it ready for Christmas. It's true. Right? This is this is the bane of of people who do movies or who do who are in production mm. of. Let's say you make Christmas calendars. Of course, you shoot somewhere on the North Pole yeah. in in summer and be ready for mm -hmm. Christmas. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I enjoy creating those illusions, so yeah. it, 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 you know, it's not really a, a burden, except when the weather doesn't cooperate. Like, for example, mm -hmm. what I'm doing now really does not need any rain, and it, this is unprecedented rain for the Pacific Northwest. And yet we've been very lucky, and we've danced around it. I, I may be one or two shots 
in the rain and uh, manage to tent them, and they're not terrible. And so everything else is without rain. And of course, as soon as I yell cut, it starts to rain. So <laughs> we have been very lucky, but very fortunate. Sorting yeah. out weather, snow. Any rain. script changes oh. due to that? I mean, do you, do you, do you sometimes have no. to incorporate the elements into? Uh, I was I was planning to okay. um, to actually indicate a sequence in the rain because I thought it would rain, but it didn't happen, and so that was great. And mainly with wardrobe and umbrellas and that kind of thing. So, all right. Any any Christmas vacation related questions from Emar or Adrian? Mm, I watched it last weekend with the kids, <laughs> 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 just after we put up our tree. As you do. As yeah. you blessings. Do. We need, blessings. We need the silly. We need the silly. <laughs> It, it's the silly helps, I think, right yeah. now. Yes, All right, yeah. let's let's go on with your links that you uh, gave us, Jeremiah. Oh, this is a nice techie one, a camera, but not just any camera. Yeah, this is a very very <laughs> interesting approach to photography, uh, cinematography, cameras in general. Uh, and really, I, I think it's the DNA of this thing really is with the RED camera, which I always um, described as a computer that you could put lenses on. Um, this is very much the same thing in a smaller um, box. And it's the kind of thing that you can convert into anything. I mean, you can eff effectively adapt it for a fixed lens, uh, a zoom lens, put at a screen. Um, it, it's a modular kind of uh, approach to building a camera. I would not argue that this is the most ergonomically <laughs> friendly. <laughs> okay, camera. just just for those who are not watching this but listening to this, we're looking at a little cube shaped thing with a with a lens mount and, and a sensor pretty much. Mm. That's it. There's yeah. nothing else but a sensor and uh, a lens mount and, you know, uh, various, um, um, you know, hard drives. So you will, you will you attach know, a lot of things around it to make it into whatever you need it to be. Yeah. So it's the kind of thing, for example, if you were on a film shoot, this, and it's, I think it's 8K, this, but, but you would, um, you know, it shoots V-Log, which is a very kind of good, quote, raw um, for cinema, uh, but uh, and there's some photos. If you go to the Panasonic page, you can see how it's adapted. But it's the kind of thing you'd put in a stunt car um, or anything that that you don't want to have an operator, it, you know, or operate this remotely. It, I can see the value of this in its um, form for drone work at very very high uh, quality. Um, but that, that's just how I approach it. I think you can really do anything with it. And I'm very curious as to if um, this will be successful. I, I'm, just, I've really always been quite keen to, to try out something that is a bit more modular like this. Um, I mean, I don't shoot a lot of moving images, so it's... Uh, so, so it's it's less less of it that for the, it's it's less interesting because it's because it's it's that as its focus. Um, but I've often wondered what would happen if you tried to put together a modular stills focused camera. Well, this um, this is uh, as good for stills as it is for cinema. Is it? Oh, that's interesting. Okay, <coughs> yeah. so because because I've got, I mean, both. That, that's interesting because I mean you could, yeah if you if you search, search on this and Google yeah, also as a BGH one rig in, uh, and go to the images page there's tons and tons of images about how people can rig these things and create useful systems out of them um, yeah I, it's uh, something that I I I think uh, yeah would be really interesting to play with for, so it, not it just gives from you, a moving image but from a stills it, image point of view. It gives you total freedom, but at the cost of having to configure it and not just having a all-in-one kind of box. Yeah, yes, that's, I could that's see this true. being used. I could see this being used uh, as a stereo camera with two of them side by side because they're extremely, uh, if, especially if you have a mount that you can adjust the parallax, you could get an 8K stereo uh, in, you know, in your hand. Um, that's interesting yeah. for photography I, I think that is uh, a significant uh, approach to things like this uh, again you could rig it with all kinds of cages and use it as a cinema camera you can um, kind of plant it in the forest uh, remotely um, you know and, and protect it 
small footprint to do uh, those kinds of, you know, nature photography where you have the, you know, the animals coming up very, very close to it, etc. Mm-hmm. Um, you can, again, use it for drone photography at 8K. That's pretty good because it's reasonably light. Um, I mean, that's just off the top of my head. You know, I, I think there's a lot of really interesting uses. All right. And from the high tech to the low tech, uh, next one you gave us here mm-hmm. is um, a pinhole camera. <laughs> I thought I would contrast that to, <laughs> you know, just a, uh, you know, much, much the same way that, that Adrian kind of uh, embraces, you know, uh, his kind of uh, smash proof camera. Th- this is just a, if you are interested in these kinds of, of um, analog pinhole vibe, uh, easy to use, um, but sort of magical image making without too much fuss and muss. Uh, this seems to be a very interesting camera, and I believe that it is um, not expensive either. It's small and handheld. Um, it's actually yeah. it's actually has a has a few three D printed components, so it's a fairly modern in terms of uh, production, and it it's, comes it's in really two good different to see sizes. How, many, how two different? Oh, and it's a six yeah. by six version as well. Nice. The six by six is really Looks interesting lovely. to me, and and um, you know it's a hundred and oh look at that what, look at that, and it has a download because they have they have open sourced the files and the exactly. plans to make it to do do it yourself if you want to. That is interesting. Yes, I was going to bring that up. So if you have a 3D printer and wanted to make it, you can just do it. And um, so that is also uh, very interesting if you had a school um, mm-hmm. and were teaching and had this kind of uh, 3D printing. You could actually teach the kids how to create a camera, put it together, and take really mm-hmm. beautiful mm-hmm. pictures. Yeah. That would be oh, it has a curved image plane, right. so you get a wider yeah. field of view. That is nice, too. And a magnet-powered shutter. Magnets make ev- make everything better, don't they? <laughs> they do. <laughs> Love oh, magnets. Wonderful. <laughs> All right, and back to high tech. Um, oh yeah, this is a topic we talked about in one of the oh long ago one of the episodes. Um, projection mapping. Yeah, this is, uh, if anyone's out there who really want to buy me a beautiful gift for Christmas, <laughs> I'd love to find this under the tree. Uh, I can't really justify any way to make this purchase mm-hmm. for myself, fearing that it'll just end up in a box on a shelf. However, uh, I, it, it looks absolutely dazzling in terms of one's ability to t- take this gear, scan, map, and integrate images on forms and then rephotograph them or um, process them. Um, I, I just think this is a very um, cutting edge new use of this kind of tool, but reduced to a, um, a usable, more um, less, more mainstream uh, approach to projection mapping. And for those people who don't know what projection mapping is, you know the 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 um, you know the, the the quick log would be, uh, you know, you're using lidar to to basically map the depth and shape, form, et cetera, of a surface. And then uh, you apply images to it that take the form of that uh, map, um, all integrated into the software um, and hardware. So is, is so, that so that the, image, the image looks like you yeah, want it to much? look like, even though the projection field is not flat? It yeah. could be a building, could be a rock, could be anything pretty much that you project yeah. on. So um, it is could that, be a human. It could be. A, yeah. A person. Is that something that you've uh, ever thought of integrating into like a movie production or something? Actually, um, like like a set that changes um, in real time or. I, I, I really, to be honest, I have it not in terms of my storytelling, but in terms of my personal work. Uh, yeah, it would be great. <laughs> <laughs> I can think of a lot of ways. Like, for example, I would love to projection map one person's face body onto another person's face and body, <laughs> I, I think, and then photograph them in high quality and process and edit them. I, I think that would be a really interesting painterly approach to portraits. 
in a new way that I, I can't quite imagine what it's going to look like, and that's why I'm interested in, in it. Uh, again, just a, a beauty shot of a of a you know um, a certain car shape where you projection map a different car onto it uh, is interesting. Um, you know, taking one kind of building and modernize it. I, I've seen it used in architectural performance, really. Right. Uh, that was extraordinary uh, in terms of its power here in or home in L.A., where the Gary Center, the Disney Center, that is all, you know, a very famous building that looks very wrapped and beautiful. A projection mapped on that, uh, the basic history of the L.A. Philharmonic in all kinds of abstract ways and music musical that really transformed the building and opened it up. And it was like you were looking at a building that actually lost the surface and you were able to look into it under the skin into the skeleton. It was, it was powerful. And they had set up on the parking lot adjacent um, chairs and, you know, for, for observing, they ran it for a few weeks. Um, it was uh, just a dazzling piece of work. So it, it's very good for concerts and, and that kind of kind of mm. collective uh, use. So last but not least, uh, you brought us. Um, what are we looking at, Jeremiah? Mm -hmm. um, this is a, it, it's a site um, that I um, I've been working on. It, it really is a, a collection of what what are or will be NFTs. Um, all based on the characters of Christmas Vacation. And I've spent <laughs> a good part of a year making these, uh, just kind of noodling with them and doing them. They're all based on the characters inside. They have a little description of of uh, what the characters, uh, who they are, and uh, maybe a, a classic quote from them. Um And, and they're just a nice little kind of boxed, a virtual boxed gift. Um, and, you know, my plan is, you know, to put them up for auction uh, probably next Christmas um, uh, because I really have been too busy to kind of or orchestrate or organize um, that approach. And also integrated into this is a, you know, certain original script pages um, and uh, various... Um, you know, kind of collectibles uh, from the film. They're, you know, they're currently, uh, it's not a public website. It's just there for me. But, I mean, people can visit it. We put up the link. It's not like I don't want people to see it. It's just mm -hmm. I haven't um, been interested in promoting them. I'll probably put them up at auction at some point. And, so so um, at, at this point, you can look at them. That's the main, mm -hmm. main thing you, you can, can do and, them, yeah. and, and build and what your appetite for next year. Mm -hmm. You can enjoy them. Let's put it that way. Yes. They're fun. They're they're a lot of fun to look at. They're definitely they're, they're, fun. I've enjoyed looking at them. Definitely. Yeah, they're they're fun. All right. Especially if you know the movie. <laughs> All right. That mm. brings us to the end of our uh, semi-official Christmas episode. I will definitely do uh, at least a couple more episodes before the actual Christmas. But um, oh yeah, yeah. I hope we Sucks. brought you a few things that might be interesting fun or enjoyable um yeah and please everybody and get next... listening get back to me with some app ideas for how i can create a zine <laughs> easily <laughs> zine maker I, would zine be maker. so I'm gonna funny go, I am if gonna there go was a zine maker that. app or something just out there. Right yeah. first yeah, comes yeah, up right, right. <laughs> maybe i should have done maybe i should have thought it through first but hey have you, have you tried was... searching for zine in the app store have you tried that one i don't think i have no, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's just Have lazy. you heard of the App Store? <laughs> Have you heard of Google? Anyway, we're out of here. Ask Thank you Jeeves. so much. Ask Jeeves. <laughs> See you um. soon. Bye bye. <laughs>